Welcome back to Nightmine, friends. Once more, we're taking out our videotape collection on Marble Hornets to shed some light on its mysteries. The main series explanation is finished, but there are some small pieces and trivia left over. With Clear Lakes 44 heating up, it's time to finish this off and get ready for the new adventure. Marble Hornets, on to ends. Let's go! First, above all else, let's tackle the two most frequent questions asked about the series. How was the operator made, and what is it as a character? Well, the truth behind the operator character is that the guys from Thak will never tell you how they made it, actually, because the explanation is apparently so extraordinarily mundane and uninspiring it would kill the fear originally instilled in viewers. It's not a mannequin and not necessarily a puppet. That much has been established. But unfortunately, we'll never know for sure because it's apparently much too boring and unimpressive to be exposed. Instead, let's just focus on how impressive something too mundane to confess came across as a frightening monster. As for the origins of the operator itself, Troy and Joseph might have ideas, but an origin or explanation was never actually worked out and never will be. The operator is a monster that works extremely well off of the core element of fear, the unknown. We don't know what it is, we don't know where it came from, we don't really know anything other than to run away from it. That's how Thak wants it, and so it shall be. As for Marble Hornets the film, this is also a two-question topic. How did the name Marble Hornets come about? As Troy told it, he was on his way to Joseph's house after calling him about the Something Awful post that started the adventure and was trying to come up with a name along the way. Before writing the first few entries, he'd actually signed up for a YouTube channel just to mark it called The Slender Tapes. Yes, that was the original name for the series and Troy realized they couldn't keep it that way. As he drove to Joseph's, he told himself the next two things he saw would serve as inspiration. He passed the Stone Product Yard advertising marble, and just after that, drove by an extermination truck that advertised its ability to kill hornets. Therefore, Marble Hornets. Adjective, noun, as Troy and Joseph have put it at many panels. Alex Crayley's original film, Name Marble Hornets, is about a college-aged man named Brian coming back to his old town to try and figure out his course in life. He encounters old friends and acquaintances along the way, and an old love interest, Sarah. His best friend Tim seems to be an equal character study and has a golden one-liner in the trailer that actually confirms what we explored in the final explanation video. Whenever I'm around other people, I feel like I'm wearing a mask to hide who I really am. Marble Hornets is just one of those very cliché, everyone's grown up in my old childhood town movies in which a regular guy attempts to solve the meaning of his existence and the whole thing is an amateur attempt at deep character studies. And though it's not revealed in the trailer, the concept behind the title Marble Hornets in Alex's film is that Brian has one moment of talking about his mother and mentions how she used to have these little marble hornets in a display case. That's… that's pretty much literally it. Troy and Joseph have also shared on numerous occasions that Alex's film is supposed to be the epitome of a shallow and pretentious college student's work, and the trailer was made on that core idea. I'll leave the link to the trailer in the description so you can enjoy it in full. In season 1, there's not much to speak of, but it's been shared that one of the absolute worst shoots took place the night of the Red Tower tape when Alex leads Seth to the operator. It was apparently the hottest day of the entire summer on record for that year, and the crew ended up driving home in silence because they were so angry at each other for being involved in something that exposed them to the heat for hours. The pillow and blanket inside the closet from Brian's house is something I didn't mention again in the Explained series because, honestly, there's no real way of telling at all who was sleeping here. It could have been Alex waiting for Brian to come home so he could come out and shoot him. It could have been to the Ark at some point waiting for Brian. And it could have even been Brian after joining to the Ark waiting for Jay to enter the house. We have no evidence of who exactly was here, but in all honesty, it doesn't really matter. Brian's house had more strangers coming in and out of it than a train station. Alex's girlfriend Amy was never used again in person on set because, like many cast members besides the main four, she moved much too far away to get a hold of at any time for a new entry after this point. And like we established in the Explained series, Marble Hornets was never meant to go beyond Season 1. The end result was meant to be Jay leaving either Brian's house on the third visit or some other location at night, getting into his car, and trying to escape the operator who appears in the middle of the road later causing a car crash. After barely surviving the encounter, Jay would have actually quit the investigation and left it all behind, ending the web series. I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty glad Troy and Joseph decided to keep going. Season 1 did, however, take its toll on them. 
There's a very solid story reason why season two takes place seven months after season one that we already know. Jay became much smarter after someone burned down his apartment and stopped advertising all his whereabouts and activities. However, the actual truth outside the story is that Thak just didn't work on Marble Hornets for seven months. They were suffering serious burnout after completing the first major project of their lives and needed to readjust, plan, and simply rest for a bit. The hotel activity that opened season two was all shot in a single day because they only had enough time to hire Jessica for that one day. At a certain point in the night, she actually needed to pack up and go to a major gig so she couldn't stay around for longer than the crew had booked. And speaking of Jessica, during the scene in which she and Jay are talking in the hotel parking lot after escaping Alex's murder attempt, Jay says he needs a password to use on the safe in his room. Jessica tells him to just use 1, 2, 3, 4, and Jay replies it's the first thing he would try so they can't use it. In the opening shot for the hotel safe, we see Jay's first try at the combination is 1, 2, 3, 4. This also happens to be one of Troy's personal favorite easter eggs. The hacked video from To The Ark, Entry 37, in which we see a video of Alex's birthday party, had to be taken down and re-uploaded within about an hour of appearing on YouTube. A fan had alerted Troy that you could see a boy in the video wearing a Spongebob shirt, but according to the video's date, Spongebob shouldn't have even existed yet. Troy fixed it and re-uploaded the video to cut out Mr. Squarepants, and it's probably why the distortion bar at the bottom seems to roll up and down at certain points. The man in the white shirt Alex kills in the tunnel, nicknamed Beardy by fans, is actually one of Joseph's personal friends, who had offered to be basically anyone in the series any character needed to kill at any time for any reason. When Joseph remembered the offer, he allegedly began the conversation with his friend by saying, Hey, do you want to die? And clearly, he very much did. Remember everybody, only true friends offer to get beaten to death with a rock for you. This should be your measure of trust for any of your acquaintances. Later on in Season 2, when Jay sneaks into Alex's apartment in search of evidence, he finds a lighter in the secret drawer where the 5642 tape was kept. This is foreshadowing the reveal that Alex was the arsonist behind Jay's apartment and will eventually burn down Tim's house as well. Then, when Alex leads Jay and Jessica to the woodshed to pull a gun on them both, we can spot Tim poke his head out of the window as Maskey, foreshadowing his moment playing the hero during Alex's murder attempt. And in Season 2, you can detect Troy's main influence for the series in many of To The Ark's videos. When asked if there are any movies or shows that inspired Marble Hornets, the team responded that the TV series Twin Peaks did have a hand in that, and Troy's primary inspiration for a good amount of content comes from the film Eraserhead by David Lynch, a black and white film that is extremely heavy on visual storytelling and symbolism. In the entry where Jay and Tim explore Alex's old house, they had to really make that shoot work in one go because the house belonged to Tim's extended family. It had been on the market for months and the team had planned to use it eventually when they were suddenly alerted that it had been sold and was about to be moved into, which meant the Marble Hornets crew had to immediately hustle and get everything shot successfully in a day. As one of the more prominent and terrifying entries in the series to fans, it certainly appears they accomplished that task. Speaking of terror, Troy describes the entry in which Jay retrieves Tim's medical files from the factory maintenance shuttle as one of his own personal terrifying instances while shooting the series. Less terrifying for the crew and much more for fans was the nightmare sequence from entry number 65, which Tim has cited as his favorite to film. The GoPro camera got more use out of this shoot than any time before due to Troy's need for Tim to repeatedly jump face first into a river for the perfect underwater shot. And speaking of cameras, the camera Jay uses throughout the series is the one and only handheld camera the team used for all of Marble Hornets. Yes, that one single camera managed to make it through five years of hardcore use out in the woods and in the dustiest of abandoned buildings. On the very last day of filming, the lens shutter began acting up and Troy nearly broke it for good attempting to fix it but succeeded in making sure it lived through the final entry. That camera is also the one Tim uses to film his battle with Alex in entry number 86 and the knife he uses to kill Alex off is also Jay's. So in the end, Tim succeeded in getting revenge for Jay's murder using his own tools. It wasn't just a nice scene to finally see happen, it was a poetic end to Alex. The college this was all filmed in, by the way, was also the one and only abandoned location the crew ever had legitimate permission to film in. The people who owned the building warned the crew not to fall through any patches of rotting floor, which actually gave them the idea for Tim to fall through the floor in the beginning of entry number 86. And speaking of Tim, the maintenance man he meets while exploring the grounds is actually his father making a character cameo. During the final entry, when Tim is driving after meeting Jessica in the parking lot, the point at which he turns the camera at a crossroads was never planned. It was meant to end after the pill bottle appeared and give us the everything is fine tagline, but Tim spotted how the end of the road looked, turned the camera on the spot, and caught the absolute perfect ending scene by total accident. In fact, Troy was in the backseat out of view at the time and they apparently shared huge goofy smiles at their sudden stroke of luck on the road. 
And finally, before one of the really big things for Clear Lakes 44 from Marble Hornets comes up, let's go ahead and reveal one last mystery I wanted to save. While Tim is chasing Hoodie in their final confrontation, he ends up in a severely burned out room in the mental hospital where he stayed as a child. A lot of fire flows past the screen reminding us of what destroyed the building and a small barbecue grill appears. It seems to melt from the heat of the fire while Tim screams before a scene change occurs. The secret behind this moment is that Tim himself burnt down the mental hospital. It was revealed in a radio interview with Joseph and Troy that the operator is very attracted to fire, which is confirmed by Alex's arsonist tendencies. But Tim, having been a longtime sufferer of operator sickness, would also be open to arson. Knowing how much he hated that mental hospital as a child and having been haunted by the operator at that location, it makes perfect sense that he would take the first opportunity outside its walls to burn it down and ensure he would never return. There's also a moment at a Thack panel in which a fan mentions Tim has a history with fire in reference to his house burning down, and Troy and Tim confirm he does while smiling, but don't say too much past that. And now for the big one. How many clues to Clear Lakes 44 have there been in Marble Hornets? A whole lot, actually. Alex Crayley's birthday is, of course, April 4th. That's the fourth day of the fourth month, which is expressed as 4-4. We know this because of the birthday party in Entry 37, which starts at 4:41 on the tape. The time on the video Alex sent to Jay of the Operator attacking him and Amy is at 4:04 on April 4th. The first season of Marble Hornets, complete with to the arc entries, makes up 44 videos. The end piece of Jessica's phone number used for the hotel safe, 1102, adds up to 4. 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 2. When Alex kills the man in the tunnel, Jay explicitly states he smashes his head with the rock four times. There are four main characters involved in the struggle of the story. Jay, Tim, Alex, and Brian. When Tim sends Jay the voicemail saying they need to meet after the events of entry number 65, we find out it arrived at 3.44 a.m. The footage of fire trucks outside Tim's house on the news after Alex burns it down is from channel 44. There are way too many moments of operator appearances and distortion effects occurring at timestamps marked by a 4 in the number during several entries. And finally, if you take the full number of videos from the Marble Hornets channel and to the ARCs, including the hacked upload on Jay's channel to the ARC set as unlisted and gave the link to on Twitter, you get the number 132. There are three seasons of Marble Hornets. The number 132 divided by 3 is, you guessed it, 44. And that's probably not even all the instances of 4 or 44 in Marble Hornets. But now you know, the number 4 has been deeply integrated since the beginning and only became more prominent as the series developed. Why though? Why the number 4? Well, in many Eastern cultures, the number 4 is explicitly associated with death. It's a symbol for a killing force. Alex, being the murderer of the series, was marked by the number 44, twice as deadly as usual. On its own, the number 4 is too average and shows up too often in other numbers to always mean death, but a pair of 4s? That's much more prominent and rare. And with that, we are finished! That's all there was to explore in Marble Hornets Odds and Ends. If there's anything you have questions about, feel free to ask me below and I'll do my absolute best to answer. If you enjoy this trivia and easter eggs video, feel free to give a like and subscribe to join your fellow creatures of the night in catching all the latest news on Clear Lakes 44 as it develops. Everyman Hybrid, which I'm very happy to say has just started up again, is the next major series to be covered here on Nightmind. It is, however, a big undertaking, so there may be videos on other topics and much shorter series popping up before the first Everyman Hybrid Explained episode, but you know I'll be doing my best to keep you informed, interested, and entertained. I'd also like to take a moment to thank all of you for your incredibly positive reception to the Alan Resnick double feature. I am so extremely glad to see that so many of you have become fans of Alan's work, and all the positive comments are extremely appreciated. Thanks again for joining me in the dark this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and unlike any new videos on this channel about Marble Hornets, I'll be seeing you again real soon. Sleep tight.